In this video lesson, what we're going to do is take a look at another new feature in Motion Builder 6, and that is auxiliary pivots. Auxiliary pivots are really cool. It's a way of basically adding additional pivot points to an effector. Mm -hmm. and that's what you add them to. You add them to effectors. So in other applications, you may be familiar with having to take the node or object and group it to itself to get another pivot point. Well, we don't have to do this here. We can create as many additional pivot points as we would like, and if you rotate from this auxiliary pivot, of course, your effector is going to be rotating around it. Right. So it's quite a nice, uh, nice feature. So, Zach, let's go ahead and bring in Mia real quick. Okay. We're going to set up just a real basic foot control system using auxiliary pivots. And here she comes, and there she is. Let's click on the uh, left foot down there. Now, adding auxiliary pivots. This is crazy simple. Yeah, super, super simple. Uh, just over here inside my character controls, I'll right-click on the left effector and create auxiliary pivot. Wow, that's pretty. easy. But once you've created one, you need to be real careful because if you go in here right now and you go to move it around, because that's going to be the first thing you're going to do is position it. Ow, that's not exactly what you're looking for. Right, so you're bringing the whole foot al along with you. Yeah, so what you need to do is you need to change its move mode over to pivot and move the pivot, which is what Zach just quickly did right <laughs> there. <laughs> so uh, actually, m I'll show you in just a second. We're going to have to do this a second time anyways, and yeah. then I'll, I'll show you exactly what I clicked on. So as a quick example of, ex of what these uh, auxiliary pivots are going to provide for you, let's go ahead and switch back to model mode. And now when I rotate, look at that. It's not, that's nice. Yeah, we're now rotating from the heel. Now I'm going to add another one of these for the ball. You can have as many of these auxiliary pivots as you like. I mean, you just <laughs> have 100 different locations from which to rotate an effector if you want so to. So you're not actually adding one for the ball. What you're doing is you're adding yet another one for the left effector. Right. And it we're just going to simply move it. It'll just happen to be the in the same position as the ball. Right. That's right. So uh, I'll go ahead and right-click on my effector again. We'll create another auxiliary pivot. It's going to pop up in the same location. In slow motion, here's how we change that movement. <laughs> Following the mouse cursor, we're <laughs> going to come over here to our um, object mode, and we'll switch over to pivot, like so. And now, when I use my move tool, I am relocating the pivot, as opposed to, uh, to moving the whole effector. Let me switch off the other parts of my rig, IK and FK, and I'll just line this up with the ball joint of the skeleton, like so. Looks good. And uh, with that, we can switch back to model mode. And let's go ahead and bring the IK back real quick. I want to point out something interesting. Oh, sure. So you've got IK back. There's the ball effector in the white. Now go ahead and rotate it. Let's see what we've got. Looks really nice, but that auxiliary pivot would be difficult to get to if you're doing animation. Absolutely. And, of course, we've been over the last few videos talking about handles, and we've looked at handles from the point of view of controlling multiple objects. But handles work fantastic as just a regular selection tool as That's well. That's right. So let's add a handle to this guy. Absolutely. Well, we could take one, just drag it in from our scene, make sure it's right on top of the auxiliary pivot. We don't want it to be on the, uh, the joint. So we'll release. It appears right in. Come into the properties, and we'll verify that this is on the uh, left ankle effector pivot too. You can see it's actually labeled. It's the second pivot we put in. And uh, I'll switch my display mode to 3D. We'll set our X value over to 0, and Y we'll crank down to oh, about 10. And I'll push it forward in Z just a little bit. And we can label it as well. Which would be oh, cool. sure. You could call it, uh, what is this, left ball pivot. And there you go. So you can see it in your viewport at all times. So now if we uh, ever need to select it, I mean, the, the one at the heel is fairly easy to see. Sure. I mean, even if we switch RIK back on, uh, it's not like anything's really going to get in your way there. You can always see it, click it, do whatever you want with a foot. But selecting the one inside the ball is difficult unless we have this handle. So now we can click on the handle, and we're good. Nice. So now let's create another effector, or um, another, I'm sorry, auxiliary pivot right. for the ankle effector. I will uh, right-click, and we'll do this one more time, create auxiliary pivot. We'll switch over to uh, pivot mode again. Get the move tool, and I'll pull this up here to the toe. Yeah, not the actual toe joint, if you will, just more or less right where you want the foot itself, the shoe, to, to pivot from. At right. The toe. Now we'll switch back to model mode, and as you can see, if I rotate, we can rotate up onto the toe. Hey, very nice. So yeah. really, with that, I've just created these three major locations from which I can rotate my foot. Now let me uh, let me throw out a, a quick warning. Be careful because it looks like at the moment you've got a, a great rig for controlling a foot. And don't get me wrong; this is a a much more simplified approach than in the past. But look at this. Look at the rotations Zach just did in this ball. Look what happened to the toe pivot. 
The only thing that's saving us right now is our floor contact. Right. As soon as we move the foot up off the ground, here it goes. Tink. Now, you can animate this way. You just have to watch out for toe sliding. That's right. I mean, if you were to, if you could possibly lift the foot off in a perfect trajectory, the toe would theoretically not slide. It would just lift right up off the floor. But that's going to be real difficult to pull off as an animator. Yeah, so be careful with that. But a little bit later on, in a different video, we're going to, we're just going to explore. We're just going to play around with Motion Builder and see if we can put together a reverse foot for you guys, a traditional reverse foot. One that you may be used to in working in another application like Maya, Max, or XSI. Uh, one more thing we can point out real quick. Two things, actually, Zach. Number one, let's go ahead real quick. Um, mm. <laughs> I hit everything. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and show them how simple it is to, perhaps we'll do the one at the toe. Let's go ahead and delete out in, in case you need to get rid of an auxiliary pivot. It's very simple. It, actually, this is really hard. Brace yourself. I selected the pivot. And you hit Z. And I'm going to hit the delete, delete key. key. So, and it's going to ask, do you want to delete the item? Click OK. And it's gone. It's that easy. And this won't damage anything. Nope. Now, here's one Unless, more. of course, you've animated that from that point. Yeah, for sure. Here's one more thing to point out that you need to be really careful about. Zach, if you don't mind, grab the heel auxiliary pivot and scale that guy up. OK, look at this. That's that's actually bad. You'll notice this green line that runs all the way back to this little X, which is supposed to be at the left ankle effector, because that's the point that's basically being manipulated to rotate around this auxiliary pivot. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do rotation. What's going to happen is the rig's going to sink back up, and that thing's going to snap, and now we're way down below somewhere, but we're still rotating from that same location. That's correct. So, yeah, you're going to... And then, so now check this out. Here's something that's interesting. So it's like, oh, well, we can just quickly jump over into pivot move mode once that happens and move it back over. So let's do that real You'd quick. You'd think so. Or you might think so if you never really used it <laughs> before. So. so we jump back over. And this is just in case you're thinking you need bigger auxiliary pivots so then <laughs> to compensate for something. So uh, let's go ahead. And the size of the small auxiliary pivot. Yes. Right. And so now you rotate. And wait a minute. Look at this. Mm, now it's all messed up. So... Just, uh, just a very important thing to keep in mind. When you bring these guys in, you really don't want to scale them. That's that, right. That's not going to that's not going to be a good thing. Right. So with that, Zach, I think that's pretty much everything we wanted to show, like auxiliary pivots. Uh, like a lot of things in Motion Builder, it's just very simple to use, yet a very powerful feature. Yep. And with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot, everyone.